saw there was nobody that we could see, we went out on the beach because it was new, brand new, just been just been put up. The bulldozers just pushed it out, climbed over the pipe to get to it, and it was uh, it was quite amazing. As we're walking along, all of a sudden this little image starts coming up, and it's a woman. And as this woman comes walking up, she has a dog by her side. Our lab that just died was a black lab that had a little white beard, and she died last week before last. Well, this lady runs up, and guess who runs up and starts playing with us? A black lad with a white beard. And part of me wanted to just rejoice because I was thinking, well, God, you're trying to tell me everything's all right, but Maddie. But the other part of me was saying, why in the world out here with nobody, and all of a sudden a black lad comes up and starts playing with us. You never know what God's doing and how He does it. You know, Linda started crying. And I said, "There's no need to cry." I said, I, "I believe God was actually bringing us comfort by that black lab." She said, "But there was nobody, nobody." And out I, of I nowhere comes this woman with the black lab. And I said, "I know." I said, "But if God's in control, and He is, then don't look at it as He was bringing pain. He was bringing comfort and healing." So we don't understand how God works. We don't understand how he does all things. We don't understand why things go the way they go all the time. But we do know that if we can have that seed the size of a mustard, a faith the size of a mustard seed. Remember, some mustard seed, you can put a hundred of them when you're on it. If you have a decent sized nail, you can a thumbnail, you can put a hundred of them on one thumbnail. And God says if you have the size of one of them, the faith the size of one of them, you can send this mountain and be our moved and it'll be cast into the sea. So so, so here we go. We're going to kind of go just over quickly over a few slides from the last few weeks. So the people that haven't heard any of this, they will get some continuity. And some of us, uh, you may not have heard the, all of it, so here it is. But I'm going to do it kind of quickly. So hang on to your hats. Uh, this was some problems they were having that day. It was an uh, unending task. It was an exhausting day. They've been ministering all day long. They get in the ship. It's an uneasy, uneasy time. And they come up on a severe storm. And there's an unending, uh, uneasy uh, temptation because the ship was sinking and they thought the Savior was asleep. In other words, he was not paying attention to what they were going through. But you've got to remember, Jesus led them into this storm. They followed him right into a crisis. God's will is not always smooth sailing. Tell somebody beside you, God's will is not always smooth sailing. Amen? Okay, so now, remember this. Faith in God doesn't make things easy. It makes things possible. So now, here we go. We're going to move right along until we get to where we're going to, going to, going to jump in for this week. There's three principles of faith. Number one, faith must be challenged, not pampered. Faith is not a life absent of conflict, but of conquest in conflict. And faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted. I do not want to jump out of a parachute, out of an airplane, if that parachute has not been tested. Amen? Amen. That's right. I, I do not want to fly in a plane that has not been tested. I do not want to, to put my life on the line wearing a suit in a fire that has not been tested. Amen? It was like, the, like, like the, 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 they were selling a parachute for only $10. And so the man said, why are you selling it so cheap? He said, it was only open once. <laughs> Used to only open once. Then there was another lady trying to sell a wedding dress. She was selling it for $5. Lady so said, why so cheap? She said, well, used once, uh, used once by mistake. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. There's a difference in little faith and faith is a grain of mustard. We talked about that. Now, here we go. Ready? Here we are. Starting on the new stuff. Y'all look say, look, so we're starting on the new stuff. Life is full of surprises. Life is full of surprises. If you don't believe me, just say never and wait. I'll never do that. That will never happen to me. This will never come up. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. Just wait. It's going to take place. So life was overcome by surprising things. They said, there arose a storm. There arose. Okay, watch this now. Life is full of little surprises. 
Arose literally means they were ambushed. It means that it came to them out of nowhere. How many lately? Out of nowhere with Maddie. You know, when Maddie just thought kind of been eating kind of funny, and we noticed that she'd been acting a little strange, but, but you know, uh, uh, during changes of the year and changes of the season, sometimes, you know, animals will act a little different, and she has done this before, so we didn't think anything of it. The same way with Bethany, with her belly button bleeding. She belly button bled all her life. I used to tell her all the time, you need it's time to clean the grease pit. Had no idea. Even the doctors were surprised because they did a CT scan and said, it's nothing to worry about. It's just a cyst on her belly button. They didn't go down below and see the, the, the stage 4 melanoma. All they saw was that cyst because you can't see melanoma with a regular CT scan. And so without taking a biopsy, it was impossible to know. So again, here comes these surprises out of nowhere. So, so life is full of surprises. So ambush is one of the devil's number one weapons. The Bible talks about Adonah Bezak uh, in the book of Judges. It says Adonah Bezak had got 70 kings and 70 kingdoms under his belt because he would, Adonah Bezak means Lord Lightning. His main style of warfare was, was ambush. And so he's trying, he, he comes in when you least expect him and he pops you one. Let me tell you something, Christ is never taken by surprise. How, how many times have you Say, well, you know, I felt something. How many of you ever said the little voice told me? We well, you know, I felt uneasy about this. Not realizing that that's not a little voice, just a little arbitrary voice speaking to you. That is the Holy Spirit speaking <laughs> to you, getting you ready for the surprise that is coming. So, so again... God is never taken by surprise. The second kings, the king was upset. The king of Syria was upset. Said, "Who keeps telling, trying to ambush Israel? But who keeps telling them?" And it said, "Elijah. You know, he, he just keeps telling the king where, uh, to watch out because you're coming. Because God is not taken by surprise." So, so again, Christ needs people with great faith who will not waver during the sudden storms. Somebody that can stand strong, somebody that can stand true, somebody that is not afraid to roll up their sleeves and get their hands dirty. You know, when I think about this, I think about, you know, uh, the firemen, and I think about the EMS, and I think about the military, and some of these guys, that, that at a moment's notice, they have to drop what they're doing and, and get with it, and sometimes it gets very nasty and sometimes very deadly, but they're, they, they, they know it's coming, they just don't know when. But so many times we don't think about there's going to come that time where we might have to get dirty. We might have to get in there. We may have to get in over our heads and not be surprised when, it, when we're called on. Amen? So first, here it is, the difference in little faith and mustard seed faith. Little faith is overcome by surprising things. magnifies common things. The Bible said the boat was covered with waves. Let me ask you a question. These guys are fishermen. Some of these guys have fished all their life. They're in their 30s, some are in their 40s. Let me ask you a question. If you're 30, 40 years old, you've been in a boat all your life, aren't you, no, don't you know that there's going to come a time when the waves go over the boat? Don't you know there's a time when things are going to get rough? Don't you know there's a time when things are not going to be right? Don't you know there's a time when things aren't working properly? The boat was covered with waves. Let me ask you a question. How many times have we let common things stop us? It's happened before. It's happened many times. But it just didn't line up at this perfect time. Oh, I was in good condition when it hit me before. I was ready for it when it hit me before. But now I'm not ready for it. And now I'm exhausted. And now when it hits me, it seems to be driving me crazy. When we just have to understand that we cannot let little faith magnify common things. These fishermen have seen this time, these waves many, many times before. 
too often we, we magnify a little sickness and a little problem until it becomes a great problem. I've seen people do that. Uh, they just keep talking about it and talking about it and, and talking about how bad it is and how it's not going to work, blah, 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 blah. And, and, and not understanding that if it's happened before, it's going to happen again. And if God was with you before, He'll be with you now. Amen? So now, if you're tired of being afraid, take away his power. If you're tired of being afraid, take away his power. And his power is your attention. I remember reading a book, D.C. was in Roses. Y'all remember Roses? D.C. was a little bitty thing. He's on the floor kicking and screaming. And I hadn't read the part about ignoring yet. He was just making a scene, little bitty fellow, making a scene. So I said, I'm going to show him what it's like. So I laid the floor beside him and started kicking and screaming. His mama ignored both of us and walked off. <laughs> if you're tired of being afraid, don't give it any attention. So now, watch. Assume the worst thing. We perish. Let me ask you a question. Whether Jesus is asleep or not on the ship, do you think Jesus is going to let the ship go down? Do you think Jesus is going to let you get out of this thing and, and be, be done with? No. Look, here it is. Make a mountain out of molehill faith. Now we perish. God wants us to act upon his word versus react to the circumstance. Be proactive versus reactive. I've talked about this many, many times. I tell the guys all the time, every place I go, especially uh, uh, Pitt Attention Center, because some of those guys, I'll say, how many expected to be here tonight? And they go, not me. I say, how many would have never been here if you had a thought about what you did? And hands go, very simple. The frontal lobe is your proactive part. But when a man's Blood pressure goes up, and when a man and a woman and mammals, all mammals, when their pulse goes over a hundred, I've told you so many times, the thinking leaves the proactive part and it goes back into the amygdala. Back here, and now you're on autopilot. You start doing things, and after you get through, you go, Why did I do that? Why did I say that? Well, why did I act that way? Sometimes that's good because of self preservation. God built it in us. To have self-preservation. And we don't have to think. It just does it fast, 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 fast. That's why the military trains so much. Why the firefighters train so much. That's why martial arts uh, uh, guys, they train so much. So they've got it instilled back here. So when it comes down to it, when, it, when it's no longer uh, proactive, when it's reactive now, you're reacting in a way that you've been trained. And it helps you from getting hurt. Well, how many times have you got so upset and breathed so heavy and got going and your pulse went up and then you started doing things and regret what you did. Amen. So let's watch this. Quit assuming the worst. We perish. Why? Little faith also forfeits the surest of things. It says why are y'all all fearful? Jesus gets up and says, y'all guys, a little, why are y'all so fearful? How often do we forfeit the peace of Christ for the fear of the storm? I remember when I was a little boy, when the storms were going, I'd be scared to death, and I'd lay in the bed, and I'd, I'd be awake all night hearing the storm, and I remember the old tin roofs. Yeah, and you could hear the storm on the old tin roofs, and you could hear the wind blowing and get y'all tore up. You know, and I'd hear it, and I'd go, ah, oh, I'm scared to death, and above that, we didn't have air conditioning, so the windows would be open, because we had a porch out there, so the wind, the rain didn't come in, and so you could hear all the storm, hear the wind blowing, scare me to death. But once I grew up, and especially once I became a Christian, I've stepped through some of the toughest storms. You know why? Because I don't worry about it anymore. I know God's got this. You know, uh, here's the fear of the storm. Here's David. Now watch this out. Uh, fear of the storm, 1 Samuel 27 to 7. David dwelt in the...
country of the Philistines for a full year and four months. He was afraid that he was going to die from the hands of Saul. And he said, David, the mighty king of Israel, he was already anointed king of Israel, but because of fear, he ran for his life and he wound up fighting for the enemy for one year and four months or 16 months. Can you imagine the mighty king of Israel, the one that killed Goliath, running for his very life because he's afraid and fighting for the enemy because he's afraid of what's coming on him. Again, it wasn't going to kill him. God wasn't going to let him kill him. God had already anointed him king. He hadn't even served as king yet. It was not going to kill him. Saul was not going to be able to lay a hand on him. But because he was afraid of what he saw, he ran to the enemy for help. See, peace of Christ is what we need. The Bible says, says in 2 Samuel 2 4, the men of Judah came after all this was over with, after he finally got himself back together, after he encouraged himself in the Lord, the Bible says the men of Judah came and anointed David king over the house of Judah. You see, here, here, here's the difference. Watch this. The, fit, the, tape, the faith test. Watch this. We always have a choice. Look at somebody say, you always got a choice. Psalm 55, here's David. Here's David during this time. Oh, that I had wings like a dove, I'd fly away. If I had wings like a dove, I'd fly away. I'd run from my problems. I can tell you, running from your problems is a race you'll never win. Ever. If God's using that problem to, to grow you, it's going to keep hitting you until you finally quit running and accept it. Isaiah 40, 31, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall walk and not be weary, run and not faint. Now, now you're running to the problem. Let me ask you something again. You ain't got to raise your hand, but how many of you are running from some of your problems? Don't raise your hands. Running from your problem is a race you'll never win. You no know what the problem is. Running from your problems is a race you will never win. You have to face it. Let God help you. Amen? I'm getting ready to close. Matter of fact, DC, you and you and Jeff come on up here. And Humboldt, you all come up here. Here we go. Y'all ready? 1 Peter 1 and 7. These trials will show you that your faith is genuine. It's been tested as fire is tested and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than that mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Every time I see that, although the boat's out of the water, although the boat's not doing anything, it captivates me. It didn't fall down. It's sitting up. It's on the sand. And behind it, God's got this. Wow.
by surprising things. There arose that storm where you magnify common things. Storms hit those guys every day. Or you're forfeiting the surest thing. Try and look. Jesus is in the ship with you. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Nobody looking around. How many can say, you know, Pastor, I think I have switched over from mustard seed faith to little faith because I'm letting some common problems take me out. I'm forgetting that Jesus is on this ship with me. And I'm letting some of the simplest things take me down. And I need God to help me correct this personal crisis that I'm experiencing. A crisis of faith. When you switch from mustard seed faith to little faith, that is a crisis of faith. God, we need you. And I'm talking to you right now and nobody's looking around, every head bowed, every eye closed. Would you raise that hand and say, you know what, I think I'm doing that. I think I found myself doing that. Bless them, Lord, bless them. I have found myself magnifying something that should not be magnified. Instead of magnifying my problem, it should have been magnifying my Savior. Instead of focusing on my problem, I should have focused on the problem solver. Instead of thinking about how my boat was being filled with water, I should have realized my boat is filled with Jesus' presence and it's going to be okay. Maybe you're here today and you just are having that faith crisis.
Glory. Somebody say glory. Glory. Amen. Amen. Now don't forget, Tuesday nights we're talking. Tuesday nights we're talking. Is everybody else before you? I know the boy. Tuesday nights we're talking about caregiving, and last week was a very, very intense. And I, I mean intense because uh, I barely got halfway through it. It was just so full of information. And helping us understand why people act the way they act when they're going to need care. And I believe that, I know, it, and I've been still taking care of, I'm taking care of my in-laws right now. We just got to take care of Maddie and Bethany and just all this stuff has just, just been so real to me. It's not out of the book. It's out of the heart. Uh, but you might be having all kinds of reasons you got to care for somebody. But just know this, you're no, you can't be any closer to God than when you're helping somebody else. When you're helping somebody else, you are. I tell the nurses all the time, in all the nursing homes I go to and in the hospitals, when I see the nurses and I see the aides, even people wiping the floors up, I say, look, you know you're God's hand extended. I went through one day and I think I was in the hospital nursing home it was last week or so. And there was a lady in there cleaning the floor. It was the emergency room. She was cleaning the floor. And some of the people acted like she was in the way. And I could tell her countenance was down. And so I looked to her and I said, you're just as important. You know you're just as important as that doctor that's coming in to check on them. And she said, how is that? And I said, you know what? Without you, this place is nasty. Without you, they can't have a clean environment. You come in and clean everything up. Matter of fact, without you, you can forget the rest of it. I said, I know you think the doctors and the nurses have got out there. That's this, this the whole reason for this. And it is. They're here for that. But I said, without you, their work is hindered. You're God's hand extended. And that lady got tears in her eyes. And she said, thank you so much. I said, just keep on doing what you're doing, young lady. You're awesome. And she went from looking real sad and looking like she was being a bother to people. She picked on up. And she started sweeping. And whatever she was doing, mopping. And she was excited. And I remember there was one lady kept coming in Bethany's room at the cancer center. And I tell her, every time I see her, I say, how you doing, God's hand extended? <laughs> The very first time I told her that, she was really down. From that time on, she was she was awesome. She was having, she come in. I said, I'm sorry, I was working, doing work. And she said, I said, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to pick, I didn't pick feet up. She says, you just don't worry about it. I'll work around you. And I said, no, 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 I'm going to work around you. Amen. You keep doing what you're doing. This work is so important. We don't want to mess it up. So just remember, none of us, none of us, none of us are beyond God's eye. God's watching. God's got you. Amen? Amen. So come Tuesday night, uh, caregivers, it's going to be awesome. I'm not sure how long it's going to go because, I, again, I thought Tuesday night was going to be, Tuesday night was going to be one session, and it wound, it's finally going to be a, a second session. Plus, people got homework. Amen? <laughs> I just said, I don't come to church to get homework. We well, got homework today. Then just get out. When you get out, say, God, help me replace my little faith mustard seed faith. Amen. Amen. Y'all looking good. Everybody tell you that? No, sir. <laughs> You're looking good. <laughs> well, Stephen Smith, some prayer, please. Father God, we just praise you, Lord, and let us remember that whatever comes our way, whether it be good or bad, that you have it, that we can depend on you. Strengthen our faith, Lord. And Lord, we just give you the honor and the glory and the praise. Praise for being a wonderful, awesome God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.